Hello everyone. My apologies for being late. Uh, it's nothing like being late in the very cold uh, Carpentino weather. Mm -hmm. Just take my jacket off here a little bit. <laughs> we would like to thank you all for joining us today, those that are here with us in person and remotely in the U.S. and overseas as we run through this very important information we would like to share with all employees. Uh, please, let's welcome Tim to the stage. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here this afternoon. We wanted to bring everybody together because there's some important questions that are swirling around Apple right now. Of course, many of them were sparked by the tragic fire at our supplier's facility in Guangzhou about a month ago. And those questions that have come up about worker safety and how people are treated there have sort of combined also with questions about our direction as a company, even asking questions about our innovation and uh, whether we're still the same kind of innovating company uh, that we once were and, or whether Apple has lost its focus. Perspective can often be very helpful in situations like these. Apple has gone through very difficult times before. Um, and at, at times in the past, we, we have we faced difficulty just like what we, we face right now. Uh, some of you have maybe heard about the things people are saying. Headlines like, is Apple walking the wrong path? Or one of my favorites. Apple strategy not quite right. <laughs> I love those really creative ones. <laughs> but as a matter of perspective, in fact, um, these headlines are not from right now. These headlines are from 20 years ago. At a period of time in Apple's history when a lot of people thought the company was in such bad shape that the best thing that could happen to Apple would have been to be purchased by IBM. But I think, I think you all know the extraordinary <coughs> success and growth that Apple has had since that time. So as a matter of gaining perspective and talking about the issues that do face us right now, I wanted to share with you just a short video clip from a meeting that Steve Jobs gave with Apple employees shortly after he returned to the company in 1997. It was in this meeting that Steve gave an internal presentation for the first time of the now famous Think Different campaign. So let's listen in. This is a little bit of an older tape, so, so listen carefully to what Steve says about what Apple is all about. No, we started working about eight weeks ago. And what we, the question we asked was, our customers want to know who is Apple and what is it that we stand for? Where do we fit in this world? And what we're about isn't making boxes for people to get their job, although we do that well. We do that better than almost anybody in some cases. But Apple's about something more than Apple at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world. That's what we do. And that those people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that change. Changing the world for the better. That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, the world's attention has been focused on the issue of worker safety, and rightfully so. People expect more from us. In fact, people expect excellence from Apple. And you know what? I am glad that they do. Because Apple has always stood for excellence. And the issue of work, the safety of workers, is, is no exception to that. I do want to tell you about what we have been doing even before the fire with regard to worker safety. We're going to hear a little bit later from our chief operating officer, Jeff Williams, about the details of what we're going to do going forward. But I want you to know that what we're talking about today is not a radical change in direction, 
but as an intensification of the direction we were already going. Apple was one of the first companies to partner with the Fair Labor Association to do inspections of worker facilities. It wasn't long ago that standard practice in the industry was to say that a supplier's factory was none of our business. It's another company. Why should we be expected to have any oversight of what happens there? Obviously, that's not acceptable. And so Apple has, has sought to raise the bar. Obviously, we have further to go. And we're committed to, to seeing that through. As Steve said in the video, Apple is not just about making boxes so that people can get their work done. Apple has always been, instead, about people and about making the world a better place through what people can do through great products. Now, an important thing to remember is that because Apple is not about making boxes, it means our operations and our success is not just about the products themselves. And in particular, it's not just about great products. It's, it's definitely not just about great devices, great hardware. That's an important thing to remember because there's a divergence that can happen when we start thinking too much about hardware and features. You know, let's think about it this way. Believe it or not, we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of the release of the iPhone. <coughs> It was 10 years ago, almost, that we introduced the iPhone to the world. Now, in 2007, the idea of carrying the internet around in your pocket was revolutionary. It changed everything and introduced lots of new ways that people interacted with the world. Fast forward 10 years, we've seen a bunch of improvements in iPhone features and smartphone features and a widespread adoption of smartphone technology to the point that two-thirds of men, women, and children, counting everybody together in the United States, has a smartphone. Smartphones are starting to become a mature product segment. Now, by no means is the market saturated. We're going to continue improving the iPhone, and we're going to continue selling them and trying to reach more people. But what we should take away from this is understanding that if you're expecting mind-blowing new features to be coming from smartphones, you might be looking in the wrong place for where technological development is going. So if it's not exciting, mind-blowing features with smartphones, where is it going and how is Apple involved in that? I'm going to point to a few things. First is... Um, Looking at, sorry, uh, looking at iOS. iOS remains the preeminent development platform for the apps marketplace. Certainly, there, there's more than just iOS and the App Store. But a lot of the, the innovation and a lot of the new developments and, and new possibilities that are unlocked through mobile applications happen first in iOS and then perhaps are implemented later in other, other platforms. Another area of development is uh, in payments. Things like Apple Pay is opening up new possibilities for how people engage in the marketplace and how transactions are done. Perhaps, though, the most significant area of technological development is in artificial intelligence, an area that we introduced to the world that we put in everyone's hands when we released Siri. Artificial intelligence is so important, in fact, that we are very close to opening a new facility in Japan that is dedicated to research and development in the area of artificial intelligence. AI is particularly exciting because it reduces the gap between people and how they use their devices to accomplish things in their lives. So taking these three examples in common, what, what is it that they have in common? Besides the fact that they are technological innovations. What they have in common is that they're about what people can do with technology and opening up new possibilities. 
See, as I mentioned before, there's a divergence that's happening in understanding of technology. There's two ways of looking at technological development. You can look at it from a device and features perspective, or you can look at it from a person perspective. What do people do with technology? Before I hand off to Jeff, I just want to trace out a few implications of this difference. The critical thing is that if you belong to the device and feature way of looking at things, then everything eventually comes down to manufacturing efficiency. If your measure of success is how many new features can we introduce how, and how quickly can we do it, then when push comes to shove, everything else is going to get tossed over the side. When you need to release the new product, Things like design originality is going to be compromised. It takes too long. Let's just copy what the other person's doing. Or something like product testing and safety. That also takes too long. What's the worst that could happen? Just ship it. More soberly, though, and here's where I want to be really firm on our commitment, is that we will not allow worker safety to become something that gets tossed over the side. In fact, we are firmly of the vision that great technology changing the world means respect for people, including the safety and dignity of the people whose hands touch our products on their way to the market. That's where we're going to take our stand. So there are a lot of questions that are focusing around us right now. But we want you to know as the employees of Apple, where we stand and what direction we are going. And now to tell you more about the details of that is Jeff Williams, our CEO. Thanks, Tim. I think he definitely took us down an emotional journey with that video there of Steve. But I think it is very important for each and every one of us to remind ourselves the reason we are here every day. There's an incredible thing over the past. Let's not take that away from us. But somewhere along the lines, we drifted away. We were so focused on building our iPhone, iPad, MacBook, we forgot about our suppliers, distributors, environment, and everything else that together makes us one. As Tim said earlier, we are here to make a difference. We are here to change the world. And to change the world, to create a positive impact, is always a better way of doing things. We have to make Apple better. We have to make better products, undoubtedly. We have to innovate better. We have to treat our customers better. And more importantly, we have to treat each other here better. This is about going back to the basics and doing it better than anybody else. Here's how we're going to do this. First and foremost, we have to create gold standard fair labor practices. Now, Tim touched upon the fire incident a while ago, but I'll take some time to talk about this incident in detail. It is important that we acknowledge our shortcomings so we know where to improve upon. Before we dwell into that, let me take a quick minute to explain what exactly happened in Guangzhou. On October 28th, I received a call in the middle of the night from the head of operations in China to report about the fire that erupted at our supplier's factory, whom we hired to Bonso Tech. Now, 25 workers have lost their lives. We all know that. And um, several others have been injured. This is definitely the most devastating piece of information we have received in the past many years. But here's what happened since the fire. As you all know, we have halted the production of our new iPhone. And we have sealed the premises of the factory. And we have migrated the workers to another plant. And we are also working very closely with the affected family to take care of their needs. Now, the reason I wanted to touch upon this is because there is a pressing need for each and every one of us here at Apple to review our labor practices. So starting next quarter, we're going to partner extensively with Fair Labor Association to conduct safety checks and inspections over and above our regular um, scheduled ones. 
uh, the, the workers in, in both our China factories and Austin here in America spend about 14 to 16 hours a day, especially before a product launch. So we have hired leaders, some very good leaders, with great exceptional people management skills to ensure they're not overworked and they maintain a strict nine-hour shift. Now, talking about long working hours, an average Apple employee spends at least nine hours a day at work. Now, that's more than half the waking hours. So we decided to make our time here more enriching. Next quarter, you'll also notice at school button on your Apple chat messenger. So what is this? We have great courses that Apple University here offers for all of you. But a lot of these courses are tailored to your area of expertise. So we've gone ahead and partnered with some exceptional, phenomenal professors from Ivy Leagues of America to bring you very, very fascinating courses. And I, I am so excited as I say this to you. So if your passion lies in robotics, you have a course for free that will be available to you. And you have a range of subjects that you can take part in from design and technology, to environmental science, to theater, to calligraphy. Now, going on to the next point, we're also going to focus on an, an, an environment. We have to create an environment that is safe, not just for us, but our future generations. A lot of you know that we have contracted with First Solar a couple of years ago to build a solar farm for ourselves. Now we have set ourselves a goal. By next year, all of Apple's offices will be running 100% on solar power. Mighty goal, but possible. And in addition to this, we have also pledged to plant 10,000 trees every year in every country we have a foot in. And lastly, here's the exciting one. We've decided to do away with 50% of our product packaging. Something that our customers have been really, really fascinated about. But we all agree that there's a lot of paper that goes in there. And this will have a positive impact on our environment. Remember that this is only the first step towards making a difference, but a significant one. For years, we've been the leaders in the digital music industry, in computers, laptops, phones. But I think it's time to become a leader in inspiring change in the world. Now, these new changes will have an impact, undoubtedly. And I'll, I'll address some of those implications. Because I think if we are prepared, then we'll be able to overcome the challenges. So there are three main departments I see and Tim see will be impacted. One, finance. Two, production. Three, logistics. Financially, there will be a direct cost involved. If we are investing with First Solar, and we've decided we will double our investment this year to get to our target of running on 100% renewable energy by next year, there's a direct cost involved there. We've hired leaders mm -hmm. in factories in China and Austin here to maintain, maintain code of conduct. That's a cost. And we've decided to also expand our factory here in Austin. Now, all these might look like direct cost to us right now, but it is an investment for our future. Imagine the impact we will have in reducing the planet's carbon footprint if we were to go 100% on renewable energy. Likewise, expanding the Austin factory is certainly a cost. But you would be reducing overseas costs and creating employment here in America. Production. Having more safety inspections will certainly disrupt the speed of production units. But if respecting people and if taking care of workers is our priority, then the pressure on suppliers to produce at the rate they are doing so now has to reduce. And we are ready to do that. Because it is OK to delay the launch of a product by a month or two, but not OK to disrespect a worker or the personal life, for that matter. The message that Tim and I are here to convey is to believe that creating shared value is not just about acting responsibly. Creating shared value translates to business and greater revenue. Apple is a great place to work. In my 18 years here, I've never felt otherwise. Corporates today have a greater responsibility towards their employers 
towards their employees and the, and the world at large. And I know that we here are the difference between the world it is now and between the greater world there will be tomorrow. So I'll hand it off to Tim to take you all through his concluding remarks. So we began this afternoon by talking about some of the challenges that we face. What I want you all to know is how you fit into this. That was our key idea. We want you to understand who Apple is, but also where you stand and how you take part. Because if our, if our vision is that technology is about people and not just products, that extends to, to all of us, too. We want you to, to have a confidence in, in where your company is going. And we want to recognize that people are whole people, whether that's workers who work on an assembly line, or whether it's engineers, or customer support people, um, or computer programmers. Every role in this company is a full person who has a role in the future of Apple going forward. You are our ambassadors, whether it's with customers or if it's just in the rest of your life, um, representing our company to the world. We, Apple exists to, to make the world a better place. Our focus is on technology, products, and services. But we're committed to making the world a better place, and you all are part of that. I do have one more thing that I want to share with you. <laughs> Part of what we want to accomplish here is not just setting goals of what we are going to do, but of course we want the world to see what we're doing. As Jeff was saying, we see respecting people not just as the right thing to do, which it certainly is, but also as good business. And so part of that is letting everyone else know what it is that Apple is committed to. So starting tomorrow, we are launching a new marketing campaign. We call it Make Better. Making the world a better place. <laughs> this campaign will feature a variety of the things that we have talked about. I'm going to highlight one of the stories that's an example of stories we're going to tell and then briefly touch on a few other things. There's a lot of stories of people who are part of the production of our products. This is Rachel. One of the challenges that workers who work for our suppliers in countries like China face is that it can be hard just to get to the place where the jobs are. Rachel is from a country, the Philippines, where there's really no availability of high-paying jobs, even for people like Rachel who have a college education. Rachel paid a job broker to help her get connected with a job in Taiwan. That job broker exhorted very high fees and costs on Rachel, such that she would have difficulty, even with her higher wage at the better job, of being able to ever work her way out of that. That's the type of situation that we want to remove workers from under. So we, Rachel was working for one of our suppliers. We made the supplier aware of that situation and how it's not compatible with the standards that we have for how workers will be treated. And that supplier canceled that, paid uh, the debt that she owed, <coughs> clearing the way for Rachel to be able to meet her financial goals with her family. There's a lot of stories like that that we hope to tell. We want to let people know about the sustainability initiatives that are part of this overall process because making the world a better place, of course, involves taking care of the world itself. The same goes for what we said about our planting trees and reducing packaging. Safety is a key thing that we're talking about. So we want to highlight what this actually looks like because it can be sort of a abstract thing for, for people here in the United States anyway to understand what worker safety looks like in other places. And finally, we also want to talk about what it works like, looks like to be a worker for Apple here in the United States. There's been some conversation about questioning us about how many jobs are here in the United States. And so we want to let people know about how, how much that has expanded 
and how many opportunities there are to, to be part of Apple here in, in this country. And finally, we, we want to tell stories about how even Apple employees, all of you, are part of the picture of making the world a better place, whether it's by riding your bike to work or many of the things um, that you all are doing uh, to, to be part of this overall mission. Again, this vision to keep people at the center of what we do, to not lose track and get focused on features and devices, but to, to, to make the most of respect for people and making the world a better place. That's what we're going to take our stand on. Thank you for your time today, and thank you for being part of this mission.